All right, hello everyone. Robert Enter, Product Director, Aaron's King of Snow category. And I'm Nick Krieger, I'm the Product Manager for Aaron's Snow as well. So, and we, we, as we understand it, you've submitted a bunch of questions to us uh, for us to respond to. Uh, so we're gonna start, we're gonna jump right into it. So Richard from Facebook asks, will you offer an impeller kit with rubber paddles? I, I think our current product does a really good job, actually. I, I mean, I. I understand that there's a lot of desire out in the market today to have impeller kits and little add-ons like that that increase performance, but I think as is, we're really pleased, we're impressed with our product. I, I don't think there's a need for it to come from us, but I think if the aftermarket wants to continue to do that kind of stuff, then cool, good for you guys. Yep. And we do also look at YouTube, so we've seen the videos out there where we've seen uh, customers putting paddles on their impellers and whatnot, so we've, we've looked at it a little bit, we understand it. Uh, but w at this point in time, we we, we don't need it. So you know, I'm on YouTube all day. Yes. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. I feel like IT knows we're both on IT. Oh boy. YouTube all day. Okay. Next question. Uh, and this comes from John, also on Facebook. What new add-ons will you be developing for Aaron's snowblowers? I have cutter bars, the new LED light, heated grips, and snowshoes. Very impressive. Uh, what else will I need for the future to make my snowblower more efficient? Hmm. Interesting. I guess I would I would want to know like what kinds of additional accessories or attachments do you think we need? I mean, we every time we make a new product, um, we go back through and we kind of look. You know, what are the accessories that customers want? Uh, you know, where's the market opportunity there? And we try to be proactive with that as best possible. I think we have a pretty good selection. Obviously, you're pretty fully loaded. Uh, I'd say I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. That, so thank you, John. That sounds like a really <laughs> sweet setup, <laughs> actually. You must be the envy of the neighborhood, I would say. Well, most Aaron's yeah. owners are. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, if, if there are additional accessories or um, attachments that you think we need, obviously let us know. Um, but I mean, we're, we're looking at that stuff constantly. Yep. I, I noticed he doesn't have a cab. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. John, come on now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, do you offer tire chains for the deluxe models? Yeah, Abs we do. Absolutely, we do. We yes. do. Yes, we offer them for really starting in classic into compact and then deluxe uh, through pro. So we offer them for all model families. Yeah, we, ooh, we can put a link. Put it, yeah. Click the link in <laughs> yeah. the description below yeah. yes. Yes. to get your, your tire chains. Um, what's better, true fuel or ethanol free 87 octane gas? That was Jim on Facebook. Those are, that's a great question. Uh, one of our number one issues that we see from customers starting, especially at the start of every season, is uh, customers having issues on car specifically, typically on carbureted models starting first of season. Uh, so really doing either of, either of those or any fuel that is octane free, ethanol free, ethanol free is, yeah. the, is absolutely the strong preference. And yeah. you, will, you will pay yourself forward in terms of your startability into the next uh, next ensuing seasons. Yeah, I think the, the biggest issue is it's so hard to find ethanol free at the pump these days that options like True Fuel that you can get at your dealer are, are great. But around us here in Wisconsin, you can get some ethanol free. It's usually the premium. You know, it's like the, the 91 or the 93 octane. So it's tough. I, I don't remember the last time I saw 87 ethanol free, but if you got it, I mean, the more for octane, it. the better. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next question. So why don't axles come, and this is a tough one, uh, so not just the easy questions that we've been answering. Uh, so why don't the axles uh, come with anti-seize from them on the factory? So the truth is that we do apply anti-seize to axles. Uh, so there is a chance that at times maybe it was missed on a unit or two or what have you, um, or potentially the, the desire or request is to add more anti-seize. Uh, we certainly, we recognize that that is a joint that you do need to have anti-seize. You don't want tires and wheels uh, rusting onto axles, so that is why we use it here at the factory. Uh, as we, from a personal experience standpoint, antifreeze gets absolutely everywhere when you put it on anything. So it's just pretty soon it's on your forehead and on yeah. your elbows, and yeah. uh, we can't have it all over our plant in that same way. So we do apply it. We understand the need for it. Uh, the question is kind of, could we do more? I'm, I'm sure we could, but there's there's drawbacks on that as well. Yeah. Oh. That was that was Scott on Facebook, right? Yes. Okay. Agreed. All right. Uh, next question. What are the limitations on engine sizes on your professional models? Non-professional models. Steve. Thank you. Steve from Instagram. Um, I mean, limitations on engine sizes. So our non-professional units, like our Platinum, for example, goes up to a 414, uh, and that's on the Platinum 30. 
uh, and then you step into the 420 cc's on all our pro units uh, as far as limitations they're they're great engines I, I wouldn't say they're not commercial they're just not as as big they don't have the the displacement or the torque of the uh, professional ones so you're missing a little bit of that but otherwise I mean they're plenty suitable yep yeah, and we're when we're trying to offer product to marketplace, we're taking consideration of really the impeller size, the housing size, the pricing, what is the market segment, what is the the regionality of the unit. So there's a lot that goes into what size engine do you need for a given product. So that that factors into all the decisions we make and what we offer on, yeah. on a given product. Yeah. All right. Next question. Will, so will the power spout and deflector from the Kraken? make it to professional or deluxe models zach from instagram somebody else asked about do any of your snowblowers have power shoots that was also from instagram that was chris so we've got the the electric shoot control on um all of our special edition models so that would include like the platinum 24 great lakes edition um and then we do have it on a couple of our other professional models that aren't special special editions i yep. can think of absolutely uh, we're glad to hear you ask about it because it's a, it's a feature that's a it's a premium. Uh, for those of you who have ever ever used a power shoot or an electric shoot control system, they're a lot of fun. So when you're out there, you're clearing snow. It's almost like a video game. Uh, and then if if you have a crack and you have a light on top of it, if you're in the dark, I mean, it is it is downright fun. So it's uh, you're going to want to clear snow. You're going to yeah. hope it snows. It, it's one of those things that kind of goes back to the engine question too, right? It's like how much is somebody really we say in our side of the business, we say how much are you willing to pay for? You know, what, what is it a feature that you actually think is worthwhile or beneficial? And there are some people who think it's really sweet. And there are some people who say it's not really worth the extra cost. So we try to make sure it's on models that kind of fit that, that brand or that part of the market. Might be another opportunity for comments down below. So if you think our models, we should, you know, continue growing that feature across other models. We're willing to say if we were to estimate a $300 premium at retail, uh, what's the interest level? Is, should we be offering it more so than we are now? Yeah, be good feedback. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Do you make extended handles on a snowblower? Great question. Yeah. So Tyler uh, from Instagram. Yes, Tyler you. must be tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Tyler's uh, tall uh, and his uh, his, his uh, wife is short. Oh yeah. So they have yeah. to. Yeah. That's how it is in my house. Yes. So. Uh, so we do not currently offer extended handles on a snowblower. I will say that the overall height of handlebars across our given product category is something that we do spend time thinking about, talking about really designing for. Uh, so actually, here's another one. We're going to use this to our advantage, selfishly. If you have feedback, thoughts in terms of uh, elevation of handlebars on our snow product, uh, feel free to weigh in on what your thoughts are. Are we, are we in the sweet spot? Are we too low, too high? I'd uh, love to hear your feedback on this. Yeah, it just, it, because of all the things that are on the dash, it makes it kind of difficult to start to change or adjust that height, you know, because you're starting to move cables, you're starting to move rods, you're starting to move, um, you know, electrical. And so we, we try to get it as best we can. Obviously, it, you're not going to fit everybody, but I think we do a decent job. Yep, I would so agree. It'll be, uh, that'll be one I'll be interested to see the comments. Yes, I would agree. All right, next question. And this comes from Cole also on Instagram. Uh, why do you say your engines are made by Aaron's when they're really made by LCT? That's uh, a good question. That is absolutely an excellent question. So we've, and this is not an unfamiliar question to us. We know that uh, it's, it's not something where we're making a secret, but we are, we brand them as Aaron's because Aaron's is a brand that we've been making snow equipment, class leading, industry leading, market segment leading since 1960. We understand that it is not just like, you can't separate the engine from the rest of the snow product. It's a complete package and the customer has to, it all has to work together. So that's why we work with LCT to develop the class leading engines that are provided on, on our products. So they, they meet and exceed our brand standards across, you know, they, they bring together the complete package. I think that the thing that you said there that probably stands out the most is we work with LCT, right? It's, it's very different than if you just, buy an engine off the shelf and slap it on your snowblower or your snow throw and um, say, okay, it, it's powered by blah, 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 right? We actually, being the king of snow, we yes. have a lot of experience, a lot of yes. expertise in engines and what it takes to be a great snow engine. So we work very, very closely. Our engineers are engine experts, just like they are snowblower auger experts and housing experts and everything like that. So we do a lot of that front end work. And then LCT is a great partner with us because they have all the ability to bring those engines to life and then help us get them on in the snow throws. Absolutely, and we've, we've developed many an engine in concert with them. 
we do see them as an extension of ourselves. Our engineering teams are hand in hand. We're all on first name basis. We, we meet with them extremely frequently to develop new product. Uh, so yeah, completely agree. Yeah, you can't make everything. We don't make our own belts either. Yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah. another way of looking at it. Tires, yeah. you name it. Okay, next question comes from Wally on Instagram. I hope I hope I said that right. I think so. Okay, if not, Wally, please let us know. Yeah. Uh, is it difficult to install hand warmers or hand grips? Heated hand grips. It's not too bad. It's not I mean, too bad. It's... Depends on who you are. Depends on your level of familiarity. Uh, it's, we do ask that you drill a hole in the dash. There is a wire harness to route. There is some um, uh, adhesive to apply as well as a rivet. It's worth it in the end though, for sure. Oh, absolutely. We hear that all the time. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are very proud of our hand grips. It's something that for me, I've, I've been around our snow product long enough that I, it's on some level I kind of forget about it. So when people bring it up, I, I'm so used to seeing it that it's, it's an expectation for me. And so when I see it on a unit that doesn't have it, it's kind of like, oh. Why are they on here? But yeah, yeah I completely understand how valuable they are, and strongly recommend installing this kit. It is an excellent kit. The good thing uh, is our dealers, our dealers do it pretty frequently, yeah. so they're yep. they're usually pretty in and out with it. I'm somebody who I think I'm kind of handy, maybe. Um, don't don't yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know you are for sure. Okay, just um, like I am. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, <laughs> take yeah. it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I am not a wiring guy, and installing the, the heated grips is not something that really scares me. So for whatever that's worth, you know, I, that would not be something I would do on something else, but on a snow throw, I think I can handle it. Yep. So um, there was another one here from Wally, uh, I believe the same person on Instagram. What are the differences in specs between the Deluxe 24 and the Compact 24? I mean that you're really kind of stepping to a completely different model at totally. that point, right? You've yep. got the bigger engine size, you go from a 223 up to a 254. It's actually a bigger frame. Um, the, the dash is a little bit different. Uh, the chute actually steps up a bit too. The chute's a little taller. Yep. Uh, you get the bigger tires. You go from a 15 to a 16 inch. Um, bigger impeller. Yep. Bigger yep. flighting, bigger gear case, yep. uh, taller housing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, they're very different. They're close on price, but they're, they're very different machines. Yeah. So it's, if you're, if you're in the market for a compact and you can afford a deluxe, especially moving from a compact to a deluxe 24, strongly suggest you consider it. Deluxe there's 20. A, there's a lot to, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, you know, upsell as you move from a compact to a Yeah, I was going to say 24. deluxe 24 and deluxe 28 for that matter are usually two of our better selling units every year. Yep. And compact's a, a good selling unit too, but um, I think customers in general, they realize that for that little bit extra in cost, if you can afford it, if it works for yep. you, you're really getting a lot of benefit. Yep. LED headlight as that, well. That's a big one. Out. Yeah. Yep. That's another difference. Uh -huh. Let's see. All right. A mammoth question yeah. from JC's Lawn Tips uh, also on Instagram. Will there ever be summer attachments for mammoth? So mammoth is a new category for us. We're very excited to have it. We've obviously we've developed snow equipment for, since 1960. We're we're also uh, another side of the business is commercial uh, lawn care. So we're it's really mammoth has become the fusion of those two. Uh, core competencies. So as we look at Mammoth, we're looking at it as a, as a category that we've just started on as well as the category we want it to become. So we do welcome questions like these because this is, here again, another a question we've been asked before. You know, it's snow, so it's sitting idle. It's snow only right now, so it's sitting idle half the year, which uh, as a purchaser, that's a, a concern from an ROI standpoint. So understand the desire to be able to use it all season. And we're definitely have, we definitely have eyes and ears on that. Yeah, it's one of those, like like you said, it's a new category for us, really. You know, yep. that's how we're looking at it. So it's not just one product. It's not just one tractor. It's it's what is that category going to become for us? And I think that's kind of where we're, we're trying to take the product line is, yep. is how do we see it becoming a better tool in general for the commercial user? Yep, I would agree. Great question. Yeah. Can I install the wheels of a Deluxe 24 on a Compact 20, 22? And this comes from Wadi. What it? I'm definitely screwing that up, and I apologize. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, so unfortunately, no, cannot. They will not fit. They're yeah. different. They're different overall uh, tire diameters. The well, axle, axle sizes are different. Yeah, so. it kind of goes back to that question earlier, right? You're talking about yeah, different axles. It's a different frame. They just they won't fit on there, unfortunately. Okay, another engine question. So, will Briggs engine ever come back? Question mark or another brand name engine. So this is from Ben on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, 
It's a great question. We've, we've also been asked this before. We're, obviously, I mentioned before how important our engine selection is to our snow product. It has to, like the entire and total product has to meet our, our brand standard. And we're quite satisfied with the engines that we're offering right now. Yeah. They, they meet and they exceed. They're, they're very, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have stayed with them for so long um, had, we, had we not been as impressed by them as we have been. And we've, we've, had a, we've got a lot of them out there and we'd know by now. Yeah, definitely. It goes back to what we were talking about before, like why are we with LCT? And it's because we have the ability to develop with them um, to really come up with the best engines we think in the market today yep. uh, versus you have the opportunity to grab an engine off the shelf. And, and we've had Briggs engines in the past. Um, they're fantastic engines. We're not going to say they're not, uh, but you always want to get that little bit extra if you can. And so us being involved in the development of our engines with LCT is, is fantastic. Yep, I would agree. All right, next question from Andrew on Instagram. At what interval should I grease the auger assembly? So this is one that, and we do off in our owner's manual, you'll find is a section that talks about service and maintenance, and it talks about all the different touch points and things you should do and on what frequency. Uh, and in that location, it is asked for that we, that at the beginning of each, once per season. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and there is instruction on how to do that. Uh, but it is very, is a great question. It, the reason you want to do that is so that it ensures that our shear bolts work when they need to work. Because if you're, if you don't grease that joint, rust will set in similar to axles and tires. And then, and then what happens is as you intake an, an obstruction into the auger assembly, you can, that torque will transmit to the gearbox. And if you don't have a slip joint, because there's so much torque that, that's going through our gearbox, you could damage the gearbox. So that's why it's so important. Yeah. It's, but it's uh, a good question and it's a great thing to be talking about. Yeah. So we're updating our blogs on our website too. So if you head on over to our website, um, you scroll down to the bottom, we've got blogs and it talks about like snowblower maintenance and um, you know, how to buy a snow throw and all that kind of stuff. And this is something that we are addressing in there too. So grease really throughout the entire unit acts to do two things, right? It, it uh, allows the metal on metal to move more smoothly, which obviously is a good thing. But the other thing is it, it helps keep water out. And water, like you said, that's going to cause that, that rust, that corrosion is going to keep things sticking and you're just going to have a bad day out on the driveway when you can be having boatloads of fun. Yes, apparently. agreed. Yes, definitely. Uh, if you're so, not, you're doing it wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, like in the blogs, I think we say once a year and that's the same thing that we say in our manuals too. Uh, is EFI really worth the extra cost? And do you, what do you recommend for the best lube? Caden on Instagram. That's like two different questions here. Um, EFI. The first one's an easy yes. Yeah, EFI is absolutely Abs worth it. Um, it's, it's one of those like, our carb engines are great, right? And for a lot of people, they work pretty well. Uh, EFI is really good because of how it manages the load. So if you're in a really heavy snow environment, EFI is fantastic there. Uh, the other thing is when you're in like different altitudes. So we do a lot of EFI engines in like the Rocky Mountains out west or even in Appalachia uh, in the east. Areas where you are in higher altitude, you have a little less air, EFI really helps manage that, that workload for the engine and gets a little more out of it. And it's just super easy to start. Yes. I have yes. an EFI in my unit at home right now and I used it this morning and it was fantastic. <laughs> yes. It's a great, it's, I mean, it is a lot of, it's also, you get the throttle control on dash, which is really fun. Uh, one of the other unsung like um, opportunities or really benefits of EFI, it is the off season storage. So really that fuel circuit, because it's, it's a, a, a closed circuit, it prevents oxygen from getting to the fuel and the oxidation of fuel is actually what drives gumming and then drives some of those concerns with being able to start after a season of off, of off use. Uh, so that's another benefit of EFI is really that, yeah. that maintenance aspect. That's a big one. And then what do we recommend for the best lube? So I'm thinking like chassis lube, like what we talked about with the yeah. augers and stuff. Yep. Um, I mean, there's, and we offer, we, so we offer lubes ourselves and I would, I would point you back to our owner's manual for a given type of lube you're talking about because there's different lubes for different locations. There's greases, there's oils. Um, so, so definitely look into the owner's manual that yeah. will guide you there. Yeah. That seems the easiest. Um, and then the last one, oh, I think we already did this. Do any of your snowblowers have power shoots? Chris yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, I think we addressed it a little earlier, yep. a number of our professional models and then our platinum 24 great lakes, because it's one of our special edition units also comes with power, power, uh, shoot the electric shoot control. Yep. 
I only see one question that I think we might have skipped over. Oh. Uh, will you develop a slush throw, a product specialized for storms that ends in heavy rain? And this is from Felipe on Facebook. Yes. At first, I would tell Felipe that you probably move away from Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, he, even here in Wisconsin, uh, we do recognize that yeah. snow is very different. The the really cold, the fluffy stuff, uh, that stuff is a lot of fun, and it's a lot less challenging. It's a lot less work for a, a piece of snow equipment. It, throw, it, it just, it, it's kind of like the sweet spot of the snow type that you would want to throw. Yeah. It's just, it's the most fun. But really, we recognize that that's not all snowfalls, and especially depending upon what region you live in, you, you can have a lot more of those slush falls, if, as you would call them, maybe. But really, we understand that there's different, different snow types, there's different snow depths, and there are different challenges for different product. So for me, if, you're, if, you, if you, you're in a region where you get a lot of that type of slush and it's a lower level or lower typical lower depths, I would encourage a single stage because of your clean to pavement. Um, really, the paddle gets, really handles that slush really well. Yeah. As you move into deeper regions, we do spend a lot of time understanding how, how that really the heavy stuff moves through our units on the two-stage side. And that's actually one of the reasons that we, we offer a, a dual belt drive. So that's something that it's, it's kind of hidden from the consumer. You don't see it. It's in our literature. It's in our, in our marketing assets. You'll, you know about especially if you're, you're familiar with Aaron's two-stage units. We've been, it's something we bring all the way back down, all the way down to deluxe uh, product category and then up from there into Platinum and Pro. But really, that's why we offer it is because as you get into those heavy, deep, um, the, the kind of like the really the, the slush type snow, that's what you need. You need that belt drive because it's 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 really the transmission that that connects the engine power to the snow head. Yeah. So that's a, a main importance and difference on Aaron's product and why we're why we're better in that region. Yeah, slush is definitely one of the hardest bits of snow for us to engineer towards, right? And I would say. Using our units, I, I've used competitive units at home and, and out in the field, and I would say our units definitely seem like they perform really well. In my personal experience, yep. much better than some of the competitive units I've been behind. Um, but it's definitely, it's a tough snow to yep. work through. Yes. But I think we do a pretty good job, and I, I definitely agree. The single stage is really a, a beast with the paddles like that. Yep, I would agree. Yep. But we do understand that... Um, Really, slush is is its own special challenge, and it's something we. It's good to 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 be reminded that we need to to be focused on some of those like uh, peripheral snow type yeah. situations while we're developing equipment. Uh, the last question I see on here: Any plans for an all electric snow throw, Scott from Instagram? Uh, we knew that one was coming. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes. So I would say um, that with Aaron's, we've been king of snow for a long time. We've been making the best in class snow throw since 1960. And we understand that when people buy an errands, they have an expectation of how well that product's gonna perform. We are very impressed with where battery technology has come um, over the last few years, especially. And we definitely see opportunity on the horizon that battery technology will get to a point where it can support an errands level snow throw. And when it does, I think we'll be ready to do one, but we wanna make sure that when it comes out, it really lives up to that Aaron's brand name. Absolutely, brand is brand is uh, primary here. So we we're unwilling to consider solutions to market that don't stand up to brand. So that's that's where we start from, and then we always build back to that. Yeah, so cool. understand it's important. We are we are keeping an eye on the market, so we see what's going on both in gas and electric. Cool. I think we got all the questions here. Yeah. So I think we're good. Yeah. Appreciate you guys sending them in. If you have other ones that we um, we didn't get to or you forgot to send them in or whatever, post them on our social media and uh, they'll get them over to us and we'll come up with an answer for you. Absolutely. We hope we answered your questions to your satisfaction. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments.